We have a wonderful ceremony ahead of us with the tradition now in its 11th year of having a student as our keynote speaker. This past year, we conducted a nationwide search and screened many highly qualified students, ranging in age from high school students to graduate students, all whom share the goal of something in the STEM field, science, technology, engineering, mathematics. After an extensive search, we are pleased to have with us this evening the 2023 Keynote Scholarship recipient, Mr. Coleman Goulding. The club is providing Coleman with a $15,000 scholarship to support his academic pursuits. Coleman is a native of Bloomingdale, Illinois, joining us from Missouri University of Science and Technology, where he studies aerospace engineering as a freshman. I, I encourage you to read the entire list of his impressive achievements within our program, but I'm going to name just a few of them. He placed first in the astronomy event at the Regional Science Olympiad competition. He was named and commended student in the 2022 National Merit Scholarship Program and also acknowledged as an Illinois State Scholar and an AP Scholar with Distinction. In his first semester of college, Coleman joined the Mars Rover design team and led the design on the sub-project of the rover's manipulator. He continues to do everything he can to expand his knowledge and experiences to one day revolutionize the way humanity understands the universe itself. Ladies and gentlemen, and I know you're going to get quiet now, please help me welcome tonight's 2023 keynote speaker, Mr. Coleman Goulding. On the afternoon of October 19, 1899, I climbed a tall cherry tree at the back of the barn. It was one of those quiet, colorful afternoons of sheer beauty, which we have in October in New England, and as I looked towards the fields at the east, I imagined how wonderful it would be to make some device which had even the possibility of ascending to Mars. I was a different boy when I descended the tree from when I ascended, for existence at last seemed very purposive. That was an excerpt from the diaries of Dr. Robert H. Goddard, age 17. He referenced that date as his anniversary day nearly every year going forward. And 27 years after he climbed that cherry tree, Dr. Goddard launched the first ever liquid propelled rocket, propelling humankind into the space age. When I found that excerpt many months ago, I'll admit, I was in a bit of a panic state as I realized I had a genuine chance to speak at the man's memorial dinner. <laughs> but when I read those words, all my panic faded away, as I knew exactly what I would say tonight. I believe that every single person has at least one of these cherry tree moments at some point in their life. A moment when they realize who they want to be or what they want to accomplish and continue their life with a sense of newfound purpose. So I'd like to ask each and every person sitting in this room tonight, what was your cherry tree? And while you think about that, I'd like to tell you about a few of mine. 2008, little four-year-old Coleman, or as my parents would call me, Mr. Happy, was indeed happy. On this particular day, it was because my sister had taken a massive cardboard box and who knows how much tin foil made me my very own spaceship. <laughs> With enough gizmos and gadgets to occupy Mr. Happy for hours and days and weeks, my parents couldn't take that spaceship away from me because I had climbed my cherry tree for the very first time. When I was up there, I could see it so clearly, the future, myself exploring the depths of space, discovering things no man had seen before changing the world. A few years later, Christmas rolled around, and there I was, Christmas morning awestruck, staring at the telescope I had just unwrapped. Later that night, awestruck again, staring through the telescope now, trying to sear the crystal clear image of the moon into my mind. 
trying to understand that us, humankind, had visited and returned from another planet, again, at the top of my cherry tree, imagining myself being a part of something that significant one day. And now, perhaps the true love for space began a few years later, when I was out stargazing again, and a cute girl from across the street and her friends came over and asked to look through my telescope. But you know, <laughs> who's to say? Hey, 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 don't worry. By this point, my father had already given me the important talk you give to every middle schooler. <laughs> Quantum mechanics. <laughs> he taught me about subatomic particles, superposition, quantum entanglement, and I was hooked. This little spark led to my research of particle physics from my eighth grade year-long passion project as I tried to understand our universe from the ground up. For my final deliverable, I wrote a short book titled Intro to Particle Accelerators, in which I explained the construction of the standard model of physics and the functions of a particle accelerator to the best ability that an eighth grader could. <laughs> After this, I wasn't just in love with space anymore. I was in love with science, with learning and understanding. As I entered high school, I found that same love for something new. Music. Through guitar, piano, trumpet, and musical theater, I found new ways to express myself and to share my passion with others. But no matter how much I loved music, academics were my priority. I knew that my parents were taking on debt just to send me through high school. And I knew the financial burden of college would fall to me alone, so I had to put forth my absolute best. And that is exactly what I did. Four years straight of fantastic grades in the highest level classes, outstanding test scores, commended National Merit Scholar, Illinois State Scholar, the power of hard work and discipline was showing through in my studies. And after a summer course in astronomy and a first place medal in the Regional Science Olympiad Astronomy event, my love for space was only growing stronger. But I became lost in the work. I was spread so thin trying to balance difficult classes with hours of musical extracurriculars every day and I knew at one point I had loved all of it, but now I was just exhausted. And so, of course, life reminded me why I love those things. Unfortunately, it was not too kind in doing so. 2022, senior year, barely one month of school left with finals and AP tests right around the corner. I woke up excited because today was the opening day for our spring musical. My sixth and final production, but this one was special. Not only did I have a lead role, but I was the assistant director. This show had a piece of me in it, and after months of demanding rehearsals and dozens of late nights, I was ready to share the story I'd come to care so much for with a live audience. More than that, I was ecstatic to have one last opportunity to perform with my friends, to make those final memories that will last a lifetime. So, Imagine the shock when my little morning headache became a positive COVID test. <laughs> Thankfully, I was double cast, so the show goes on. Meanwhile, I'd be spending the next two weeks alone in my room. I was devastated. A few nights later, my friends in the cast dropped off a care package for me. I took a break from the snacks and the self-pity to go through it, and what I found nearly brought me to tears, a folder with a handwritten letter from every single person in the cast. The ones from my close friends were heartwarming, but many of these 50 plus letters were from people I'd barely spoken to. I read about all these moments that felt so small to me, a smile, a quick how was your day, but it's such a massive impact on others, and it all fell into place. I'd forgotten that my goal wasn't the work I'd become lost in, my goal wasn't to make enough money to pay for college. My goal was all those things I imagined from up in my cherry tree. To make a discovery, to change the world. Goddard's goal wasn't just to ascend to Mars, it was to progress all of humankind by doing so. To do something small that had big impacts for every single one of us. Mr. Happy was back in action. <laughs> Fast forward through graduation and summer and you'll find me at Missouri University of Science and Technology, excelling in my classes and combining my love for STEM and space by pursuing a degree in aerospace engineering. Beyond that, thank you, working on our Mars rover design team and our satellite research team with plans to do so much more, from engineering internships to releasing my own music to one day truly changing the world, my goals have no end in sight. But cherry tree or not, I couldn't be where I am now without the support of so many incredible people. First and foremost, my mother and father, who provided for me every day and taught me kindness, strength, and everything in between. 
My sister, who showed me what a true hero is by working on our front lines as a paramedic saving lives. Mr. Lytle, my fifth grade teacher, the first to teach me to be truly curious, and Miss M, who taught me what the word love really means and directed every production I did in high school. my wonderful friends, and of course, the National Space Club and Foundation. This opportunity has been an unbelievable honor and an absolute blessing. From the bottom of my heart, thank you. So, ladies and gentlemen, I hope by now you have your cherry tree in mind. So it's time for my two final questions, so please, Take a minute, breathe. Remember how it felt to be there. Remember that moment when you realized who you wanted to be, what you wanted to do, and I ask you this. How far have you come? How far do you want to go? There's no right or wrong answer, but I wanted to use my time tonight to do more than just tell you my story. Thank you so much. Thank you, Coleman. That was wonderful. It's inspiring to witness the enthusiasm he brings, and I think everybody in this room understood that. So you're a gift to our community, and we look forward to seeing you thrive in your future. <laughs>